A common late winter sound. In the woodlands of the eastern United States and Canada is the duck-like chattering of male wood frogs as they try to attract a mate. These calls can be heard when 50 degree days are preceded by long, slow rains, which fill the vernal pools wood frogs depend on for breeding. Wood frogs are kind of an odd frog. They spend most of their time in the uplands, only coming to water to breed in the late winter or early spring. Their scientific name, Lithobates sylvatica, translates into litho, stone, Bates, who walks or haunts, and sylvatica, among the trees. The stone who walks among the trees. A very fitting name. When the late winter rains start and the daytime temperatures start to rise into the 50s, wood frogs can often be seen hopping through the upland forest on their way to the nearest vernal pool. A vernal pool is a temporary pond that, as the name suggests, fill with rainwater in the spring and will usually be completely dry again by midsummer. Many other species of critters use these pools for breeding, including many species of salamanders, tree frogs, dragonflies, and the super cool fairy shrimp. The main reason vernal pools are such popular places for breeding amphibians, insects, and crustaceans is since vernal pools are temporary, they don't contain a population of fish, which would quickly eat all their babies and even many of the adults. There is an excellent backyard ecology podcast all about vernal pools that I will link in the description. The males migrate to the pools before the females and begin their chattering soon after they arrive. Interestingly, about 80% of the wood frogs breeding in a vernal pool have returned to their place of birth. When the females, which are generally larger and lighter colored than the males, arrive at the pool, there is already a large congregation of males, and any female that enters the pool is quickly grasped by a male in a breeding grip known as amplexus. While this sounds more like a move in professional wrestling, it is in fact a biological term for the hold the male uses to secure himself to the back of the female. He wraps his front legs around her body, just behind her front legs. Think Heimlich Maneuver. Only instead of dislodging an obstruction from her windpipe, the tight grip stimulates her to release her jelly-covered eggs, which the male fertilizes as they flow out of her and into the water. After she is done laying her 1,000 to 3,000 eggs, the male will release her, and she will exit the pool and return to the uplands for the rest of the year. Males will grab other males and already spawned out females from time to time, Anything that moves is a possible mate for a male that is in breeding mode. But they can differentiate between females ready to breed from the spawned out females and other males simply by the plumpness of their bodies. They quickly release anything but egg laden females. If you love learning about super cool frogs, then hop on over to that like button. While frog mating is generally a one-on-one -on -one affair, sometimes the males get a little over-enthusiastic, especially when the males greatly outnumber the females. When this occurs, what is known as a breeding ball occurs. This is where a whole bunch of males attempt to mate with a single female. Somewhere in the middle of this writhing mass of frog legs and bodies is a female wood frog. The rest are males attempting to fertilize at least a few of her eggs. These balls can last for quite some time and make me think of the chess scene from Mel Brooks' History of the World Part 1. Which brings up a question. What is your favorite Mel Brooks movie? The wood frog breeding frenzy in each pool lasts only a few days. However, the breeding season may last longer as the wood frogs don't breed in all of the pools in an area at the same time due to differences in elevation, sun exposure, and other microclimate factors. As breeding commences, the vernal pool will become filled with clear, bobbing, jelly-like egg masses. The dark embryos that will develop in the tadpoles are easily seen inside of them. They remind me of some weird jello dessert you would find at a potluck dinner. The development of the eggs is dependent on water temperature, with them developing quicker if the water is warmer. Likewise, once the eggs hatch into tadpoles, their growth speed will depend on the water temperature and possibly on the availability of water. There is some evidence that the tadpoles can somehow sense a drying pool and increase their growth rate to beat the water disappearing. Some of you may be wondering, if these frogs breed during rainy winter warm spells, what happens to them when it gets cold again? Excellent question! Wood frogs are more than a cute face and cool sounding calls. They have an awesome superpower to go with that cool looking superhero mask. They can survive being frozen. Not just a little frosty, literally frozen solid like a frog sickle. They can survive several freeze-thaw cycles in a short amount of time, which is helpful if you are a frog that becomes active during the winter. 
Wood frogs are well adapted to the cold, which is a good thing since they are found mainly in the north and are the only frog to live above the Arctic Circle. Unlike many frog species that spend the winter at the bottom of a body of water, wood frogs spend it in the woods, burrowed under leaf litter. This keeps them out of sight of predators, but doesn't protect them from freezing. As the temps plummet, the wood frog freezes, just like a pack of chicken in your freezer, and its body produces glucose, which helps keep their cells from being damaged. Once fully frozen, up to two thirds of the water in its body will be ice and look like the shaved ice you get in a snow cone, only packed all around its organs, which take on the look of beef jerky. Even the lenses of their eyes freeze. When it warms up, the wood frog thaws and the process reverses and it can go on doing wood frog things with no ill effects. The eggs they leave bobbing in vernal pools are also resistant to freezing and can survive repeated freeze thaw cycles and still produce viable tadpoles. How cool is that? The tadpoles generally take around two months to fully metamorphosize into froglets. As their vernal pool dries up in midsummer, the froglets will disperse into the surrounding forest where the males will mature for one to two years and the females for three years before returning to their natal vernal pool to breed. Wood frogs are not large frogs, around one and a half to three and a quarter inches from the tip of their nose to their butt, what herpetologists call snout vent length. Their coloration is well suited to the forest environment they live in, mostly browns, greens, grays, and sometimes reds, and it can be quite variable. The females are often more brightly colored than the males. Their small size and cryptic coloration make them tough to find out in the woods, and even in areas where they are common, wood frogs are often only seen during their short breeding season. The late winter breeding frenzy of the wood frog is a spectacle to behold and to hear, and is a sure sign spring is not too far away. But they aren't the only critter to breed at this time of year. There is a common mammal that breeds during the late winter, and you may see it, or more likely smell it. And to learn all about it, check out this video, and be sure to get out and explore nature in your backyard.